What is going on, people? Welcome back to Double Clutch Auto Reviews, and thank you so much again for tuning in for another review video. My name is Mark, and today I'm here to pay homage to the last generation, potentially, of one of the most iconic rally racing legends of the late 90s and early 2000s, and a car that inspired many of us car enthusiasts, young and old. This is the 2021 Subaru WRX STI. The STI platform has been known for decades to be one of the last standing, truly analog feeling sports sedans that are available today. This is the last model year of the fourth generation STI that Subaru will be producing, and it's probably the last STI that we may see with the familiarities that we all know and love, like that flat four 2.5 liter turbocharged engine made it to a six speed manual transmission. As of March this year, Subaru announced that they won't be producing a 2022 model STI, which is potentially the unfortunate death of an icon. We may see a fifth generation STI later down the road as this new WRX platform that just came out gets more developed, but who knows what kind of STI that will be. It may not be even a combustion motor with a six-speed manual anymore. It might be a fully electric STI, but we'll see. This iconic sports sedan has been provided to me for the day by Mastery of Subaru here on Route 44 in Raynham, Massachusetts. If you want to check out this STI for sale or one of their many other vehicles on their lot, come check them out. I will put all of their contact information, website links, and phone numbers in the description below. So now let's talk exterior styling of the 2021 or fourth generation STI in general. I personally really like the styling of this car. I think it's always been a handsome looking car when this generation first came out in 2015, and I think it's still a pretty good looking car today. It's well proportioned, especially for a sedan. It has a brawny muscular road presence to it, and it's overall aged very well. One thing that I have to mention about this specific car and the STIs that came out from 2018 and newer are these wheels. I am just not a particular fan. That's my own personal taste. I don't really like the two-tone design with the silver and black. I think they would have looked a lot better if they were just one single color. I know you can get different wheels and put them on this car very easily, but I just have to mention that I really like the wheels that came out on the SCIs from 2015 to 2017. I like those wheels a lot more. I think they look way better than these wheels. But in turn, the late model STIs, including this one, have the facelift with that more aggressively styled front bumper, which I think looks way better than the 2015 model years. And now let's dive under the hood and talk performance numbers of the 2021 STI. This STI, of course, has the 2.5 liter turbocharged flat four cylinder EJ257 boxer engine, making 310 horsepower at 6,000 RPMs and 290 pound feet of torque at 4,000 RPMs. That's made it to a close ratio, six speed manual transmission with all-wheel drive and a driver controlled center locking differential. It does zero to 60 in four and a half seconds depending on how fast you shift of course and it has a top speed of 150 miles an hour. It has a 15.9 gallon fuel tank and it's rated for 16 miles per gallon city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway and 18 miles per gallon average overall. Taking a good look at this motor, it is quite refreshing to see in a modern vehicle an engine bay that isn't completely covered in plastic. Yes, there is plastic here and there, but overall we can see most of this motor, which is a good thing. Of course, we also have the top mounted intercooler with the functional hood scoop that's been characteristic of WRXs and STIs since the dawn of time. That air is forced from the hood scoop into this top mount intercooler that cools down the air going into the turbocharger and into the air intake, thus giving you more power. Some more performance specifications of the 2021 STI include six piston Brembo brakes up front with 14.4 inch rotors and two piston Brembo brakes in the back with 12.8 inch rotors. The curb weight of the STI is right around 3,500 pounds, which is about 250 pounds more than the previous generations like the Bug Eye, the Blob Eye, and even the Hawk Eye of last decade. Although the STI did put on a couple of pounds over the last 15 to 20 years, and it also gained some length in wheelbase from 100 inches up to 104.3, it still puts a smile on your face ripping it around a back road. Unfortunately, one of the biggest downfalls of the STI platform as a whole in my opinion as well as many others is the fact that Subaru really hasn't bumped up the power of this car that much and frankly 310 horsepower is not that much and not enough of an increase being that this car is produced 20 years later. All right, y'all now coming onto the interior of the WRX STI. You can unlock the car one of two ways. You can either push the Subaru logo right in the middle and that unlocks the car for you or if we lock it again, you can see I'll just put the key in my pocket and then I'll walk up to the car, put my hand on the handle and it unlocks 
for me automatically. The first thing I like to point out is the door cards. I like how Subaru didn't cheap out completely, especially on these parts of the door that you touch frequently, the armrests and whatnot, rather than just black plastic everywhere, which I appreciate. And now we'll take a look at the seats. These are not the Recaro seats that come in the STI Limited, but I have sat in both. I'll show you a quick snippet of the Recaros in the STI Limited right here. And I have to say, these seats are pretty much just as nice. I bet the Recaros feel a little bit more bolstered, but on Honestly, these seats will do you just fine. We have the red seat belts as well. Of course, I have to point that out. And now taking a quick look around, honestly, the materials in here are pretty much exactly what I would want if I were buying a car like this. The materials that you touch frequently, the seats, the armrests, the steering wheel, the gear lever are all finished with nice materials. The parts that you don't touch a lot, like the dashboard and these other random buttons, for instance, they could get away with some black plastic. Sure, it's not the most expensive feeling interior, but this car isn't meant for that. So I think Subaru put the right materials in the right place in this car. The steering wheel feels great in your hands. It has a nice grip to it. It also has the flat bottom, of course. Let's push button start. You can also see what drive mode we are in in the center of the gauge cluster, and you can change it via this dial right here. We have three modes to choose from. We have Intelligent, Sport, and Sport Sharp. To go to Sport, we go left. To go to Sport Sharp, we go right. And to go to Intelligent, we just push it down. And you can see as we rotate through all the drive modes, you can see all the different torque curves in real time that it's showing you in the center of the screen. Below that, we have our center differential controls right here. This is definitely the coolest part of this car, specific to the STI drivetrain. We have an auto mode and a manual mode with our plus and minus selector for the center differential right here. Right now, as you can see, I have it in auto and the center differential will distribute the torque as it sees fit based on my traction at any specific time while I'm driving. But if you go into manual mode, just push this button right here, you can see that the screen changes and now I can select exactly how much torque split I want all the way up to fully locking the center differential. This is only recommended for loose surfaces or off-road driving. But if you want the least amount of traction control assistance and you want the most sporty and responsive feel, you go into manual and put the torque split all the way down to minus, which gives you 59% rear and 41% front torque split. Next, I'd like to talk about this screen top and center on the dash. Right here, you can see our boost gauge. I'll show you now a couple examples of revving the motor with the RPMs going up and seeing the boost gauge go up and down. You can also change the readout on this top and center screen with this little control right here. Cycling up, you can see our average miles per gallon, our acceleration slash throttle percent in real time, which is pretty cool to see. You can also see our pitch angle range to empty. You can see the time or you can cycle through the settings as I'll show you now. You can even adjust the things like the beep. You can go to high, low or off. We can also go to our maintenance page right here, oil changes and other service scheduling and whatnot. We can also go to our driving history and even go through all of these car settings like the defogger, hazard switches and whatnot, various other things you can change in this little menu right here. And now moving down below that, we'll talk about our infotainment system. Now, a lot of people do say that this infotainment system is outdated, especially for a 2021 model, but to some people, that's not a detriment to the STI. It's actually a benefit. It's not overcomplicated. It's only a seven inch touchscreen. It's not this huge, gigantic thing. Right now we are in home. You can see we have Subaru Starlink. We can go to our apps as well to show the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If I had those hooked up, we also have Pandora. You can go to our radio. And of course you can just cycle through. The sound system in here also is okay. It's not bad, but if you're gonna want some real, real quality bass and crisp sound, you're gonna wanna upgrade to an aftermarket system, at least a subwoofer and an amplifier. But honestly, if you just want a radio that works, this will do you just perfectly fine. And below the infotainment, we have our climate controls. Pretty self-explanatory. I like the fact that it's just traditional buttons, easy to operate, you know, Nothing too complicated there. Moving down below that, we have a 12 volt outlet and a little storage cubby. And of course we have our manual transmission. This is the close ratio manual transmission and the shifts are actually pretty short. I'll show you now. So when going from first to second, third to fourth, you can see that it's actually quite notchy, especially going into gear. I really like the fact that Subaru kept a mechanically linked manual transmission. It just has a true analog and proper traditional manual transmission feel. Moving down below that, we of course have our drive mode selector and center differential. We already went over that with our two cup holders. The cup holders work perfectly fine for a mug or a bottle about this size. We also have varying stages of height depending on where you'd like to place it. But if you have a bottle 
of around this size, my big water bottle, this isn't gonna fit in these little cup holders, unfortunately. If you don't wanna use your cup holders though, you can slide this little piece forward and that cleans up the look a little bit. I like that a lot that Subaru incorporated this. Next to that, we have our manual parking brake, of course, and our heated seat button right here. I love how Subaru kept actual switches for the heated seats. You don't have to go into the menu and select anything, just right here, high, low, off, super simple. Don't need to overcomplicate it. Love how they kept that. Next, we'll move on to our center console, which is mm, relatively tiny, I cannot deny. But we do have two USB ports, an aux jack, and another 12 volt outlet right here. Cannot forget to mention that we also have another cup holder in each door cubby, which if you take my coffee mug, you can just squeeze it on in there and it'll fit nice and snug but if you have anything bigger than this it probably won't fit in that cup holder and now moving on to the rear seats i have to mention i love the fact that subaru kept the nice materials this kind of faux suede slash alcantara material from the front that they used and also put it in the back they didn't skimp out for the rear seat passengers i very much like the fact that they incorporated the nice materials into the rear seat of this car as well you can even see it in the seats they look exactly the same pretty much as the front seats and they also feel nice definitely appreciate that we even have the red seat belts of course climbing on in you could see I have the driver's seat in the position where I would be if I were sitting driving the car and I'm about six feet 200 pounds and I have quite a decent amount of leg room my headroom is a little bit skimped I maybe have about an inch before my head hits the roof overall sitting back here is a relatively comfortable place to spend time as long as we don't have five adult passengers but if we just have four people i could see myself being relatively comfortable back here for a decently long road trip now taking a look at our center armrest you fold this down you can see we have two additional cup holders but we do not get climate control vents or any other usb ports or any other amenities for rear seat passengers as you can see there's nothing behind the center console and lastly before we get the sti out on the road for a spin i'd like to talk about the trunk we can open the trunk one of two ways there's a button right by the steering wheel or you can of course open it via the key fob <laughs> the funny thing is about this trunk I don't think I've ever seen a trunk open quite this fast ever in my life. So watch this, you hold the button on the key fob, this trunk literally flings itself open, catapults itself to the sky. I'm telling you, when I first did this, it literally almost hit me right in the face. So once you've officially dodged this registered weapon of a tailgate, we'll take a look inside the trunk and you can see we actually have a decent amount of cargo room. We have 12 cubic feet of cargo space with all the seats in place. Not great, but also not that bad. Considering this size of a sedan of course we would have a lot more room if we had a hatchback version of this generation wrx sti that was one of the biggest complaints about this platform when it first came out however subaru did mention though that they had a certain amount of money time and resources to develop this wrx sti platform so they decided to cancel the development of the hatchback to focus all of their money time and effort into making this platform with the sedan version as good as it could be which i wholeheartedly agree with i'm glad that subaru focused on making this car as good as it could be instead of just making two versions of sedan and a hatchback i'm perfectly fine with just having a sedan for that reason to close the trunk we of course don't have a grab handle which i hate but the springs on this trunk are not that powerful despite the fact that it flings itself open they actually aren't that stiff when you go to close it and you can just kind of stick your hand back here so you don't have to put your fingers on the outside of the paint and just fling it on down and you're all set all righty y'all finally getting the 2021 sti out on the road and taking it for a righteous rip so right away i love the bluff valve sound i don't think that it's aftermarket i think that's stock definitely could be a little bit louder especially if you want to have that tuner car feel but that's what the aftermarket is for gives you a nice pshh. i'll see if i can get it on camera <laughs> what i also find hilarious is that i get it it's a center differential so they abbreviate it with c diff but <laughs> i just always giggle and cringe a little bit every time i read that this button says c diff on it if you're in the medical field, you know. But uh, if you don't know, I warn you, look it up, but you might be grossed out when you find out what uh, what else C diff stands for. The shifter feel is quite good. Pretty easy to rev match and it pulls right around 4,000. You can really feel that torque kicking. Man, this thing handles, buddy. Oh yeah. Ha <laughs> ha 
because the visibility is great. I can see everything around me, front, sides, back. Even with the rear spoiler, I did drive one of these with a rear wing, and even then, it didn't block my rear visibility at all. I know this one has the ducktail spoiler, which looks nice, but the SDI wing is kind of characteristic of this car, I have to say. Either way, though, the visibility in this car all around is great. Contrarily, though, the driver's seating position is a little bit higher than I would typically like. I can't lower this seat anymore, and I like to sit really low in vehicles, especially one like this, like a sport-focused sedan, right? But unfortunately, uh, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm sitting kind of on top of the car rather than in it, which is a little bit disappointing. What's also interesting is we have multiple modes of traction control. We have traction control on, and you can also just push the button once, and we kind of go into a track mode or you know traction mode whatever subaru wants to call it it just says trac period and that's kind of like a halfway point for the traction control it doesn't completely turn it off but if you want to fully turn it off you push and hold the button and that'll allow you to completely turn off traction control or any other driver aids the shifter feels great the clutch feel is great i feel like it just hugs the road effortlessly it's very confidence inspiring maybe a little bit too much and that's where you could potentially get into trouble if you're overconfident now another thing i have to mention that i love about this car is the sound i love the way that this exhaust this motor the blow off valve all sound subarus are known for sounding great and this one is no exception expect it to be a little bit louder even in stock form because this is the STI of course it does sound good though you can definitely hear that unequal length header rumble that we all know and love and right now of course I have it in sport sharp with the center differential all the way to the rear so I have 59% torque split rear and 41 in the front and I have to say the feel of this car is really really good the steering is really heavy feels fantastic you definitely feel connected to the road i just wish that it didn't rev hang if it didn't rev hang i feel like this thing would be so much better be almost perfect for an sti the ride is a little bit stiff but you're in an sti so who cares you just feel like you can rip around big corner <laughs> nice decent turning radius it is a little bit wide due to the fact that this is all-wheel drive <laughs> the seats feel comfortable though uh they're well bolstered i definitely don't feel like i'm missing out not having the recaros these seats feel great in regards to the steering feel i'm in sport sharp the sportiest setting that this car has and when you go to turn in just a little bit there's maybe a less than half an inch of on center dead spot when you go to turn in i've noticed so you just have to get used to that but once you turn in man the steering stiffens up quite a bit and it feels great i just want to keep driving this car really i feel like i uh don't want to bring it back so soon i just want to keep ripping it around this thing's fun. If you hear that beeping too, that is also my uh, shift light or shift indicator. You can set that to various different RPMs, whichever you choose. I'm not sure if I like it or not. At first I thought like something was wrong with the car with the beeping. I thought I was doing something wrong with it, but no, in fact, it was just the uh, shift indicator. Nonetheless though, it is there if you'd like to use it or you can just shut it off completely. All right, from first, ready? Here we go. <laughs> I wish it had more power. I do. I'm not going to lie. I feel like being an STI, I'd say 400 is a solid number, you know, and you could definitely feel that it's only around 300 it doesn't really throw you back in your seat. It still is very fun to row through the gears and feel the boost kick in as I will do now.
I wasn't expecting that. So good on you, Subaru, for really, truly making a testament to the STI with this center differential. It does its job, and it does its job well. This is a fun car. I'm glad I gave the STI a second chance. I drove one a little while ago, but I didn't really get to spend that much time with it, and I didn't get a good feel for the car, but I'm very blessed to have this opportunity today to really drive this car and see what it has to offer. When you put it into intelligent, though, via the SI drive system, the steering lightens up dramatically. So if you don't wanna go full rally race car mode all the time, unlike me, that's what I would do, or I think most of us would do, honestly. But if you don't, you can drive this car calmly. It quiets right down. You put it in intelligent and the steering fuel lightens right up and you can easily daily drive this car. One of the best attributes of an STI it is a wonderful daily driver that also serves as a very fun sports sedan. And you can also have a family with this car, theoretically. Car seats do fit in the back, and you can carry five adult passengers. I will say, going around corners, hucking it around in intelligent mode, I don't like it. And you definitely should put it in sports sharp. You can definitely feel a difference. All in all, the Subaru WRX STI is a quite practical, yet still very fun four-door family sports sedan that can be taken for a righteous rip on pretty much any road surface. I think one of the main reasons that Subaru won't be making this platform anymore is unfortunately due to the ergonomics of this engine. On the bright side though, the Subaru WRX STI platform will go down in history as truly one of the most iconic entry-level tuner cars that inspired a whole generation of car enthusiasts enthusiasts, including yours truly. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching my little review video of the last of the breed of the 2021 Subaru WRX STI. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you might have learned a little something about the STI if you didn't know it already. If you want to come see this car or one of their many other cars on the lot, come check it out at Mastery of Subaru on Route 44 in Raynham, Massachusetts. I will put all of their contact information, including their website links, phone number, and address in the description below. Thank you so much to those guys for letting me borrow this car for the Day, like and subscribe to the channel I really appreciate it it really helps me out to grow my channel and it means the world to me take care guys stay safe out there and I'll see you on the next review have a great rest of your day peace or vehicles that are well taken care of you only really but I felt like I've had a uh...